Planning, in many ways, is our response to the unknown. It's a beacon we create, casting light on the foggy paths of the future. By planning, we attempt to bring a semblance of order to the unpredictable tides of life. We set goals, create routines, and envision futures. Not just as a means to an end, but as a way to make sense of the world around us. Yet, in this structured endeavor, there's an acknowledgement of life's inherent unpredictability. For every plan set in stone, there are countless others that remain fluid, adaptable to the ever-changing circumstances of existence. It's a delicate balance, this dance between foresight and flexibility, the sitting right between the known and unknown. And as we journey through life, planning becomes more than just a practical tool. It evolves into a philosophical exercise, a reflection of our hopes, dreams, and our understanding of the world's rhythms. The canvas of youth is often painted with broad strokes of idealism. Before the halls of high school beckon, many young minds are already introduced to the world of planning. Parents with dreams reflecting in their eyes and, and <laughs> psychologists armed with theories from Erickson to Piaget or Piaget often lay the foundational bricks of what one should become. As the turbulent waves of adolescence approach, society steps in with its own set of blueprints. At high school, often portrayed as the crucible of identity, nudges young souls to figure something out. The weight of expectations, the allure of pure perceptions, and the echoes of ancient philosophical dilemmas, like Sartre's existentialism or Aristotle's ideas on potentiality. These begin to shape worldviews. But how does one exactly figure it out? In the labyrinth of this confusing time, each corridor represents a choice, a challenge, an opportunity to define oneself. Something that's supposedly going to affect the rest of your life. But the process on this decision making is seldom linear. It's a mosaic of experiences, reflections, successes, setbacks, and happiness. At the heart of this journey is the act of self defining. With every decision made, a piece of one's identity crystallizes. It could be as profound as choosing a career path or as simple as picking up a hobby. But each choice, each action is a statement of existence, a declaration of I am. Enter Jean-Paul Sartre. Uh, why did I say it like that? Enter Jean-Paul Sartre. The French existentialist philosopher who posited that existence precedes essence. Essentially meaning we first exist. Essentially meaning we first exist and then through our actions and choices, we define our essence, otherwise known as our purpose. For Sartre, freedom was paramount. He believed that we are condemned to be free implying that with this freedom comes immense responsibility. In the context of adolescence, this means that young souls have the freedom to shape their destinies, but they also bear the weight of their choices. Sartre's philosophy challenges the notion of a predefined identity or destiny. Instead, he emphasizes the power of the individual to create meaning via action. In the tumultuous years of high school and college, this existential perspective offers both solace and a call to action. 
it suggests that while society may offer blueprints, it is up to each individual to pick up the pen and draft their own narrative. In this existentialist vein, planning is not merely in this existentialist vein, planning is not merely a pragmatic act, but a profound assertion of our freedom. To plan is to exercise our agency in a universe that often seems indifferent to our desires. It's a conscious act of rebellion against the absurdity of existence. As Camus might say, a way to find meaning in a world that offers none inherently. Plato, in his allegory of the cave, spoke of individuals chained to a wall, mistaking shadows for reality. Planning, in many ways, is our attempt to turn away from the shadows, to venture outside the cave and glimpse at the sunlit world of ideas. It's our endeavor to align our transient lives with the eternal forms of truth, beauty, and goodness. But what if the inhabitants of the caves are training based off of these shadows? They don't have the knowledge of the outside to plan otherwise. And they're basing their entire lives off of something that isn't real. The Plato's allegory of the cave serves as a poignant reminder of our human tendency to mistake the superficial for the substantive. Plato's allegory of the cave serves as a poignant reminder of our human tendency to mistake the superficial for the substantive. In the dimly lit confines of the caves, the shadows on the wall become the prisoner's reality. But what happens when one ventures out and is bathed in the light of the sun? Suddenly, the shadows, the plans, the routines we've clung to are revealed for what they are mere approximations of a deeper truth. In the realm of planning, this allegory urges us to recognize the difference between our projections and reality. Plans like the shadows in the cave are but reflections of our aspirations, desires, and fear. They provide structure and predictability, yet they are not the sum total of our existence. Drawing from Sartre's existentialist thought, we are reminded that while plans serve as guideposts, it is our actions, our choices in the present moment that truly define our essence. To be overly bound by our plans is to risk missing the richness of the unplanned, the spontaneous, the serendipitous moments that life offers. Yet planning when approached with awareness and flexibility can be a profound act of existential freedom. It becomes a conscious choice to engage with the world, to shape our narrative, and to aspire towards our own version of the good life, as Plato might describe it. In the dance of existence, planning is our choreography, a blend of intention and improvisation. It's a journey of seeking balance, of understanding the shadows while being open to the illuminating truths beyond the cave. Emerging from the cave, one is met with the vast expanse of the world, a realm of endless possibilities and a myriad of paths. It's a world where the abstract ideals of the cave find their tangible expressions. Here, planning takes on a new dimension is no longer just about navigating the shadows, but about charting a course in the full light of day. Yet, with this newfound clarity comes his own set of challenges. The world and all its complexity presents us with countless choices. How does one decide which path to take? How does one rec- rec- How does one reconcile the ideals of the cave with the practicalities of the world. 
Sartre's existentialism offers a guiding principle. A guiding principle. Sartre, Sartre's existentialism offers a guiding principle. Authenticity. In the face of life's myriad of choices, it's about staying true to oneself, about making choices that resonate with one's own essence rather than conforming to external pressures or societal norms. Planning in this broader context becomes an act of self-affirmation. It's about setting intentions that align with one's value and aspirations, but it's also about being adaptable, recognizing that while the world may be predictable to an extent, it's also teeming with unexpected twists and turns. The true art of planning then lies in striking a balance. It's about having the foresight to prepare, or the wisdom to adapt, and the courage to embrace the unknown. For in the dance of life, as Sartre will remind us, is not just about following a predetermined script, but about creating our own narrative, moment by moment, choice by choice, break by break. In every endeavor, there lies a duality, a tension between opposing forces. Planning is no exception. On one hand, it offers a roadmap, a guide to navigate the complexities of life. It provides structure, clarity, and a sense of purpose. Through planning, we anticipate challenges, set milestones, and envision our desired outcomes. Yet, on the other hand, there is an inherent futility in believing we can chart every twist and turn of our journey. Life, with its inherent unpredictability, often laughs in the face of our best laid plans. Unexpected events, chance encounters, and the sheer randomness of existence can render our plans obsolete in an instant. So where does this leave us? Is planning a futile endeavor or is it an essential life tool? Like many philosophical quandaries, there seems to be no definitive answer. Instead, the truth lies somewhere in the balance. Planning, when approached with humility and adaptability, becomes less about predicting the future and more about preparing for it. It's about recognizing the value of intention while remaining open to the beauty of spontaneity. It's a dance between the known and the unknown, the expected and the unexpected. In the intricate dance of existence, where every step is both a choice and a chance, planning emerges as our rhythm, our beat, our guiding melody. It's a reflection of our adapt. It's a reflection of our. It's a reflection of our adapt. It's a reflection of our audacity to dream, to hope, to aspire, even when faced with the vast and different expanse of the cosmos. Drawing the wisdom of Plato, we are reminded that while we may strive for the ideal. Perfection remains elusive, and in Sartre's words, our very existence is defined by the choices we make, even in the face of life's uncertainties. So as we sketch the blueprints of our futures, let's embrace planning not as a rigid framework, but as a fluid art form, an art that celebrates our agency, yet acknowledges our limitations, an art that finds beauty not just in the dimensions we set, but in the unexpected detours, the serendipitous moments, and the lessons learned along the way. For in the end, planning is less about the paths we chart and more about the footprints we leave, the stories we tell, and the echoes of our journey that resonate in the vast theater of existence.